afternoon. Oh. Right, well, another grey day. I do feel when I step in here, it feels a bit like a jungle, especially as our um, hydrangeas kind of stay in here for the winter. Although it doesn't look very happy, so I'm not quite sure what's wrong with it. Uh, anyway, let me prop the door open. <gasps> but first coffee. Oh, oh. Right. Oh. Oh. Hope you're all well. I'll show you my jungle. It shed the jungle shed. That's what it feels like. I'd be amazed if I can manage to get these seedlings to um, through to spring. I really will. Oh. Cheers, everyone. Oh, come and have a look at the jungle. I wonder if you see it from when I can't kind of step in. It just looks like that, you know, it's just all green. It's actually quite pleasant to walk in on. Um, Taunton Dean looking happy, which is brilliant. Rosemary is alive, as are, I can't even remember what these are. I've got a process of elimination, so there's um sprouting broccoli where's the thingy for these oh, where is it oh there it is these are these are brussels sprouts so what were they again cabbage spring cabbage and the leeks <laughs> yeah Whoa. right so it's going to be hedgehog chats today um i had a vague knowledge of hedgehogs very vague uh, affection for them like most i mean who doesn't i mean who doesn't love a hedgehog I, i'd be i'd be amazed to meet one person who say i'm um, don't i'm not keen on hedgehogs i think you know in sort of fiction and all that you know in children's books you always see a, a, a lovely drawn hedgehog they, they come up in our kind of popular culture um, but when I first started the allotment, um, some of you, rightly so, pointed out sort of hedgehog hazards uh, that, you know, are well worth adopting in order to save them. Because they've, they've had a, they've, this is all stuff I've recently read, but they've had a terrible decline. Like they, I mean, it's, I will look it up, it'll come up here, but a terrible decline um, in recent years, it may be the last decade. Uh, where their numbers have dropped really significantly and, and people with gardens they, because this is another thing about hedgehogs because they visit multiple gardens as well as public gardens and parks and other habitats so I'll try and put them here um, and so what they would do is they call it the hedgehog highway uh, not hedgehogs but people who love hedgehogs and it's it would be if you had a garden and I need to do this with mine because it did really make me realise the only trouble with my garden at home is that one side is complete wall and it's breeze block wall. Although I have a gate um, and I think they can squeeze under. But the trouble is my neighbour's garden has, you know where you have wooden garden fences, but you have that kind of concrete, uh, it, 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 you know, just to stop the, the fence from rotting. What would really be amazing if these blocks of concrete had a hedgehog hole so that a hedgehog could pass through um and therefore creating a kind of hedgehog highway through multiple gardens there is this really good website that you could put your postcode in and you could it, it gives you a rough sort of estimate of how many hedgehogs are in your area uh, i think there's a little bit more information that i'll try and i'll put a link in the description to that and maybe a little lip, uh, picture here of what it what it was in my area um uh, but I was really interesting but creating and trying to create holes in your garden so that they can pass through because whilst they're passing through they obviously eat all the sort of pests that we might like slugs snails very, lots of other types of insects earthworms they do eat a multiple but snails and slugs which are we would rather consider a pest they they eat um so they are definitely the a gardener's friend 
and you must get some in the allotment. At the moment, for all I know, there might be some hibernating under my shed. Because sheds, outbuildings, underneath, is they like to create a little nest and dry leaves and, you know, they create an actual nest, which is where they would hibernate in. Um, and so adult hedgehogs would weigh 600 grams or more, maybe. I don't know whether that's their optimum weight. And they would hibernate very well throughout the, the winter months, which I think is November to March. Um, but when it's unseasonally warm, which is what it has been for us, sometimes they have a second litter uh, in maybe September time, which means the hoglets, baby ho hedgehogs, who have sort of hit November at the hibernation time, maybe only weigh 200 grams and if so if we if I, if I came across and i think that hoglets might that you know they might go to sleep in long grass that's another area that they might nest which is where the strimming comes in to be really careful with strimming and maybe i mean this is what i'm going to try and what i must do is just check the over the areas that i'm going to strim before i strim um, and sort of try and adopt that kind of hedgehog care practice uh when i sort of do my allotment jobs or in your garden same process and also have a wild area that was another sort of hopeful that people who you know to help hedgehogs have somewhere to and that's what i'm trying to do by the pond uh so basically ho hey, hoglets if you do come across a baby hog hog hoglet um it it, it needs to go to a rescue center because they will and that's an actual hedgehog rescue center not just any old vets there will be one somewhere in your vicinity um, because unfortunately vets don't have that long term care where they can look after a, a hoglet throughout the winter months until it's big enough to be released. Uh, they might euthanize or they might pass it on to a hedgehog rescue centre. Best to just take it straight to a, your nearest hedgehog rescue centre. Uh, Google will be your best friend on that regard. I've located where mine is, which I think is in Thorrington. Um, I'll put a link in the description to to their to them in mind for all you local Colchester peeps, um, because they will kind of care for the hoglets uh, until they're the right weight, until winter is over, until they can be released. So, uh, I, what I found out as well was don't put them into their nest if you think if they kind of come out of their nest for whatever reason. If you find the nest nearby, because the 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 mum or mum not dads dads have no involvement in their baby hog hogs, <laughs> uh, they won't touch their hoglets if they've got a human scent on them. Um, so best is take them if, because they will need help through the winter months. There's no way they'll survive. They'll freeze, which is a terrible thought. To be fair, ponds. Now my pond, uh, I'm going to cover. Let's check the time. Uh, I'm definitely going to cover, and in fact, I've brought, um, I will go out in a minute, I'll, I'll show you, but ponds, so this is the thing, hedgehogs are, are good swimmers, and I never knew this till this morning, thank you Jackie Burton, I, that was such a, I didn't know, I didn't know, but apart from that, what they would struggle, so if they, if they fell into a swimming pool, if you're lucky to have one, but there was no way, way of them getting out of that swimming pool, they would just slowly they would, would drown through exhaustion because they just if they you know if, if they weren't rescued in time so any friendly ramp for a hedgehog in a swimming pool or a pond of any kind because they're quite good climbers so if you have even have a raised pond they might get in and so some form of race and in fact my hedgehog ladder on a bit of wood if it needs if you need a slope would be would be fine i can hear someone talking oh here we go just a minute <laughs> um, what was I saying? Ponds, ponds, ponds. Oh yeah, it, getting out of those ponds is really, really um, vital. Oh, and the other, any holes of any description, if you have fence pole holes, they could get stuck down there and, and, and die of starvation. If you've got debris in your garden, like netting, or pea netting in your allotment where it's um, dragged on the ground, they could get tied up to that. You know, um, legs get tangled, spines can get tangled, then they'll they'll die uh, because they, from, you know, especially if you don't go to your allotment for, for weeks on end, because especially in the winter months, or, you know, even in the summer months, abandoned, um, not abandoned allotments, but you know where 
but you know it depends on what you're like you like i had left that netting out that i mean i shouldn't have done that so it's that is in now you, you know you learn but it, it we kind of not really really but humans are terrible at thinking about other creatures unless you're you've learned to so <laughs> things like that where they could get tangled so they so what they say is you know when you have netting like pea netting just keep a kind of gap like that for for a hedgehog for, i don't know i'll i'll try to get up here the optimum height for a hedgehog to get through to pass through because they they snuffle about i mean anyone who's ever heard a hedgehog the, the sound is um i actually remember one of my old houses that we lived in the back garden i remember we, were, we heard this noise and it was like i think it was the first time i'd ever heard a hedgehog because i never saw them as a child because in kilburn we just didn't see them i don't just didn't see them i don't know where they were they, they, they must have they must have been there somewhere but they're they're quite no, they're nocturnal obviously um so you don't see them during the day or rarely and if you see them during the day then there's a problem so let's hence take them to the hedgehog um, rescue centre there's no way a, a, a hedgehog during the day shouldn't there's a definite problem um, oh and apparently they have a tail I never knew that till today no that was quite I was quite little facts like that I, I was delightful what was I saying oh my god oh, I can't place rewind <laughs> what was I actually saying oh my lord I'm gonna go I'm gonna rewind I'll be back <laughs> I rewound. <laughs> yeah, so what I was actually getting at, oh my god, my mind, um, is the, the first time I heard um, hedgehogs was in our back garden that we had, um, well, it's got to be getting off 16, 7, 15 years ago, and they snuffle and grunt and make quite a loud noise. It's beautiful. I think they were they were nesting under our summer house that we had in the back garden. That might have been, we, it was a great summer house. We used to spend, watch only fools and horses in there and it was just a brilliant summer house it was lo absolutely lovely um and so obviously in the summer months you're kind of more out till late aren't you and uh and so the noise it was just very noisy very noisy creatures snuffling their way sniffing out food invertebrates i think that they mainly eat um it, yeah absolutely fantastic oh and apparently um so food getting on to food if you are lucky enough to have um, hedgehogs that you can feed, don't worry if you forget or they, they have plenty. They do not starve if you forget to put out the dog food, meat based pet food. I think cat food and dog food are OK. Never cow's milk, apparently never cow's milk, but a dish of water. And so and in, particularly in the summer months, even if you. I think it's probably best to leave out water because even if you're not sure if you've got hedgehogs, the chances are, especially if you've got a shed down the bottom of your garden, the likelihood is you have. And and if you if you can create a kind of holes in your fences, uh, your likelihood you're going to have even stronger likelihood of having hedgehogs. So leaving water out in the hot summer months. Imagine that heat that we had. I mean, I'm definitely going to sort out um, a hedgehog. Uh, I'd, I'd like to try and I mean that that area in fact let's go outside talking of um leaving out so i will try and leave out uh, well i will always leave out water um, i forgot the um i forgot the mic right hold up okay i forgot the mic absolute idiot oh, oh look fire guard <laughs> this is what i'm going to cover the pond with can you see that i mean i might need to have a bit of wood but let's take it over This is just an old fire guard, one of those ones that you, when you have toddlers, it's, so it's quite a large fire guard. I mean, I'm hoping it it will fit. And I probably need to put some sort of wood over. I need two hands for this, this isn't going to work. But just for argument's sake. Oh, right. So, what was I saying? N Ness and, well, what was I saying? Oh my God. Right, what was I flipping saying? Oh, I just need to think for a minute. So, yeah, I mean, areas where I might leave water, I would, as soon as they, from March onwards, I'm definitely going to have an area where they can, water, 
daily. So I have some sort of saucer bowl, maybe dug into the ground that I can refill with water. And, it, and you know, it would be lovely if this will eventually be covered and will be a, quite a wild area uh, with obviously some sort of planting. But hopefully underneath that they will form nests under there, create nests under there. Um, and like Jackie said, like you said, Jackie, they are good swimmers, but having somewhere just to, and she, you did think that they would be fine to crawl out of this beach area. But if you had a pond that didn't quite have that, then these, this sort of ladder is absolutely perfect and cost effective as well at £6.35. I was actually really pleased about that price wise, because as I said, yes, the other day, uh, hedgehog ladders are quite pricey. Also, pond covers can be quite pricey as well, but this would work. I might have to sort of strengthen the this area, but this is really for children to not fall in, but it would stop hedgehogs falling in as well. But I would want leave a gap so any creatures can get in and out through the beach area. So with regards to food, so definitely no cow's milk. Cat or dog food, meat-based is okay. And like I said, um, if you forget, they won't starve because there'll, there'll be plenty of insects, slugs, snails, etc., for them to not nosh on loudly. <laughs> um, and also nesting areas, and it's being conscious of where those nesting areas. So if you're dismantling an old shed or even an old greenhouse, maybe, I don't know if greenhouse, no, greenhouses probably wouldn't have a kind of false floor, would they? But if you're dismantling a shed, be really wary once you're ready to take it off the floor a bit nice and gently, just in case there's hedgehogs hibernating underneath. Or, 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 or sleep during the night. You know, in the summer months, they ha will probably go there, same in the same nest to sleep at night, uh, during the day, because they're nocturnal. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, even like, they sometimes they like to sleep in sort of areas like this. So when I start extracting this, I'm going to have to be really careful about what's underneath. Um, when I, I don't, I will have to be, you know, if I don't want to sort of stick my fork in and accidentally pierce one with the fork, that would be absolutely awful. You know, it's like little long grass areas that they might be in. So it's always just use your eyes and see if you can see in, you know, like, that's like definite, something was living in that at one point. At least I think that, I don't think anything is in there now, but, they like compost bins, apparently, perhaps on the, even on the undersides, and it might be that they find they hold holes on the side or, or whatever. And they would easily get into underneath um, uh, sheds down that side. And like my compost bins down here, it looks like it's gonna rain. Um, so these compost bins that I've got here were kind of like similar. There is like a sort of void at underneath. They, they might they might get in and create nests in under there, but even inside somehow they might get in. So it's just being um, careful when you kind of extract by using perhaps your ha your ha gloved hands initially to try and see if you can, and if you just, just disturb a nest by accident, either kind of retreat and just leave, just leave. Some stuff can just wait, um, you know, I've definitely, uh, if, I, if I came across a nest there, I'll be like, right, walk away, I'll leave that, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> leave them be, as it were, yeah. Well, I, I honestly, um, I'm going to make this a hedgehog friendly allotment, which I, I think is, well, you know, a needs must. Oh, in fact, this is a good area where hoglets might, you know, little creatures might go to sleep in. In the it, summer months, it, oh, it's starting to rain. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely raining. That's uh, to be fair. I've I've really enjoyed learning more. Be oh, it's gonna be <laughs> about hedgehogs. I really have. Um, thank you, Jackie Burton, for pointing me in the right direction. There are loads of Facebook groups, and I will put in in my in the um, description uh, 
links to, to lots of Facebook groups. Even if you didn't have a garden, just, just you know, it, it's just really good to try and support. You probably have friends and family who you could kind of like lecture and get them to create uh, holes in their fences or concrete whatevers. I mean, it's worth a try, worth a try. Create, creating that hedgehog highway for them because their numbers have really declined and it would be a sad day when we lose them completely. And that's coming, if they're declining the way they are, one day that will happen and that's just, that, that, I really hope that doesn't ever happen. Um, so yeah, oh, thanks everybody. It's definitely it's getting a bit wet. <laughs> thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care, bye. We'll leave you with some rainy, soggy allotments. <laughs>